Hi everyone, this is a news station with me and my dear brother, uh, Kenneth Swan. We are uh, here to continue our journey to productize an idea that's called Cloud Foreign or Project Abstraction. The idea here is to be allow people to uh, be able to end their systems end-to-end -end offline in airplane mode without having to rely on, a, on an internet connection or a cloud provider to ensure that their systems are healthy and running. This helps a lot in so many different occasions. It helps a lot when you're trying to develop systems in a kind of you know closed environments when you are not supposed to have network connection, when you're uh, in an airplane, when you are, you know, or when you just can't afford the cloud and you want to be able to build great systems, you know, and you just, you know, you're a student, you know, you, you, know, you, you just graduated and every penny matters. You know, there's so many different reasons for it. So, Ken, last time you and I kind of uh, got it to work, right? We got it to work, right? Yeah. We want to do it right and we want to do it pretty, right? So uh, the thing, the theory here that I'm trying to kind of uh, work with, because this goes a little bit more beyond than just cloud providers or uh, uh, queues and anything like that. This is more around, uh, like for instance, someone was talking to me the other day about, uh, hey, I want to be able to send an email. So I'm using SendGrid, right? So I asked her, I said, well, how do we accept and test that? How do we test that end to end without sending an email every single time you run your test? Like there's unit testing. Right. <laughs> right. So, so again, here you go. Airplane mode. We need a little library that basically takes a different uh, uh, endpoint. And based on that endpoint, it basically determines whether it wants to actually connect to a, an actual provider or pretend that it, there's a fake API. It stands up a phantom API, right? And this phantom API basically pretends that it is the receiver of these requests. The, the other thing here that I want to press on is that uh, I have to mention, though, uh, Steph reached out to me, you know, and he said to me, Hassan, here's a bunch of examples. Here's a bunch of ideas. He got super excited about that idea. You know, he started to share some of his, I, I, you know, Steph, Steph, if you're watching this, thank you so much for your continued support. This is really great. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a very smart guy. So just hear me out. Here's what we want to do, Ken. Like today we have this Lake U. have lake u like this and this lake u basically is configured to be able to go talk to a an actual cloud or to connect to through wiremock to this fake api yeah right there's some problems that we need to solve right first of all i want to build this library in a way where people can go and say i need to implement a certain interface and that's all I need to do to be able to switch from Azure to AWS to GC to anything, Google Cloud to anything else, right? So right now we have Azure sitting in here and we have a local API, Phantom API. Right? Yeah. And this local Phantom API is basically sitting here right pretending to be the equivalent of this right and we configured yeah. it in a way that it, if it receives a hit it will pretend as if there is an event running and all that cool stuff that that we talked about exactly here's, here's what we need to do we need to kind of start thinking about building a library called lake u core and this lake u core only knows about this, uh, sorry, only knows about this local local API. Right. Yes, yeah, like the contract. Right. So it it comes out of the box with this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, you know, people will be able to go and say, "Hey, I'm implementing your interface, and I'm offering, you know, this adapters." Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm offering this little uh, uh, extension. It's called Lake U Azure, which basically leverages Lake U Core to talk mm -hmm. to the local API, but also, you know, gives you the other option where you can redirect towards towards Azure. 
right? Yeah, so what, what the experience is going to be like, they're going to be able to say, hey, I can use the bare bones core structure. And, and there you have to kind of simulate what your output's going to be. Yeah. But um, if they want to go a step further and not have to deal with all the configurations and all the other stuff, they can actually tap into a real live environment structure of using by using the adapter and say, instead of like forming what um, an Azure event grid is going to send me, I actually have an adapter that's going to give me all those models right out of the gate. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So what well, what does that even like look like? Because this here, this little model here that we're talking about, this model is going to be the same model that we use with things that are cloud foreign for emails, cloud foreign for, mm -hmm. you know, Cosmos DB, cloud foreign for whatever is out there. It, whatever is out there, it needs to be uh, cloud foreign. So I am thinking, let me find here an IDE and let's take a look at this. So here is a new project. Let's see here. Here's this new project here. Here. You know, I, I guess it doesn't help if you have 20 open Visual Studio <laughs> instances. I'm not judging, man. I'm not. I'm impressed that you're running that many instances. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer's still going good. It's a little. It's a little chill. I, I should. I should upgrade this computer at some point. Anyway, so here's 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 the concept that we want to work with. Um, uh, let's see here, brother. I'm just. I'm just trying to kind of. You know, it's kind of challenge challenge uh, us in a way to see okay actually let me increase the resolution here because i want people to actually see you know what what that looks like okay so this is visual studio and where is our meeting here it is. Okay, you can see Visual Studio still, right? Okay, yeah, so let's just good. let's just conceptualize this. Let's go here and say here's a new project, and this project is just a .NET library, and this .NET library has its lay queue core, right? And that's one library sitting down here. Okay, great. This yeah. lay queue dot core basically gives you the bare minimum the basic let's say you have in here a lake u client right and you have the lake u um let's see here ken this is uh i lake u client because you're in you, that's your interface like this and uh that's that's what this library is offering and it's giving you two things Basically, going and saying, "Oh, here is a value. Uh, here is a a a void register uh, uh, event handler with mm -hmm. a generic type, right? And here is a func with a, a, a an event handler and return the value task like this. Mm -hmm. This is okay. event handler. Minimize this a little. There you go. So that's that guy. And then it also goes and says, "Hey, I also have." value task, publish event of T, and that's my event right here. Okay. Okay. And this lake you client core implements this somehow with the local API. So this core library is the library that will have the basic implementation. Now, so behind the scenes when you're actually spinning up the the wire mock and stuff there's going to be sort of that are you creating sort of a broker um and then yep. that's going to be injected into this client and then that's yep. going to gotcha, yep. gotcha, yep. okay i follow yeah and and that's actually is already there like if you look at like we already have the the lake u library it works mm -hmm. i could publish it today yeah. but the problem yeah. is it's not perfect it's not good enough it needs to be good enough because it, it solves my problem today. Like the problem that I'm trying to do, test uh, integrations with queues and stuff like that, it solves mm -hmm. that problem perfectly well. But if I stop right there, 
that's exactly the opposite of everything I've been advocating for, right? Yeah. It has to yeah. be something that works way beyond your need. So check this out. We have this guy right here. Modularity. Yeah, exactly. Modularity. So we have the library from end to end. Like if you go all the way to um, the API server broker, we already have mm -hmm. the configuration. That's the uh, that's your wire mock right here. Yeah. And it goes yeah. through a it goes through a service, a foundation service for events. So there is one for external events, which is the one that talks to the actual uh, uh, service bus, right? Okay. Like if you go underneath this guy, this guy goes into a queue broker, right? It yeah. works. It's test driven. It's clean by some standards, but it's not modular. Yes. Okay. It's not okay. modular, right? So, so let's go back to this guy here. Okay. It's just an idea that I want to see whether we can figure it out together or not. Because if we can't, then so okay. So you have this Lake U core. This guy gives you bare minimum, basic, outside of the box configuration. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this guy takes in a constructor that has a connection string in it. Okay. okay. Like that, right? So okay, I have my connection string. You know, I'm doing something in here. Great, right? So now Ken is coming in and saying, hey, I want to actually create something that is cloud foreign. So I'm going to go and type in lakeu.azure, right? And you went and created this lakeu.azure, right? Okay. Now, the question here is, I'm assuming you would want... I'm assuming you would want to do something that doesn't break the existing contract. Like if your client is already instantiating this way, mm -hmm. how do you shift the direction? Like, like this, this core library doesn't know anything about, about Lake U Azure. The outer wrapper, right. Yeah. It's kind of like an SDK. It's like if you right. created a, you created a platform, now you're creating an SDK to interact with it. Um, and I think one of the things we could do is um, leverage um, the use of, of options, right? Like an options pattern or something. So let's say that we have different cloud providers and because they're going to be configured differently, right? Because there's yeah. going to be certain ones that have different advantages by doing this or whatever yeah. else, like yep. you know, advantages between different platforms. So it's like you could almost create an options for the, the SDK that you're creating. So for Azure, like you might can you might need more than a connection string for using interacting with certain things, right? For whatever reason. So you can grab those options and then from a sort of middle layer transform that to what the client, I'm sorry, the core will be expecting. Okay. Right. So the core can have its core set of options like, hey, for queues, we need this at a bare minimum. Um, for sending emails, we need this at a bare minimum. Um, and so then if you have that transformation to where like you can fit it to where those options match correctly, um, or just having a certain set of options, you could just say, Hey, these are the options point blank for like, you know, cues, emails, whatever, right. You could standardize it or you could leave it flexible. Um, but to your point is like, if we could set up a way where you can inject those options into your core framework that they're using or that it rec options that it recognizes, then you can probably just continue the flow. Does that kind of make sense? So, to you? so, 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 okay. No, no, I, it, it makes sense to me. So you want to pass in options. So there is this idea or model. So here's the models. And there's this idea here that's is, let's call it like you options. Just a model that we have. And this option, the, these options, I'm assuming, Kenny, that these are the ones that you want to pass in the constructor? Yes. Okay. yes. So it could be like a connection string on there, um, you know, okay. various properties. It depends on how you want to get it going, right? Like you could overload, like have different constructors for different option sets. Um, you know, for right now, we can keep it strictly just saying, hey, we have a set of options and then can expand from there. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have so you have the Lake U options. Great. Now mm -hmm. your customer, the Azure. Let's add this dependency here first. So here, this guy, I'm assuming, like if you're 
if you want Lake U with Azure, you go download Lake U Azure and it pulls in Lake U Core with it outside of the box. Yes. We yes. know that, right? So with that being said, that basically means that we need to have a thing in here that's called Lake U client, right? Because they have their own client to instantiate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they could. I mean, <clears throat> it kind of depends on how open you want to leave it for um because I to your point, yes, you could you could they could create a client that is a wrapper around it and add different functionality in which they're transforming the logic and just really just tapping into Lake U core. Mm -hmm. But from the outer perspective, it might be easier to call it this way when you're Azure versus AWS. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So they, they could they could create their own client per se for that, for that SDK. Okay, because, because you know, also because, like thinking of, of the end user, like my dream, my dream here is to be able to go and say, just just a pseudocode here, you know, you have this Lake U client, right? And you're basically going and saying, use Azure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you're sending in Azure connection string. Okay, just the same way, like, yeah. The exact and here's where your option would be for Azure, like whatever option they want to. You pass the options in here. Okay. Okay. But again, it could be just connection string too. It really just depends however they want to configure it, right? Like if they yeah. need more than one property, if they need a certain configuration. But by the way, we could also offer both. Like we could go and say, hey, you can pass a connect. Like, like let me show you where I'm getting my inspiration from. If you okay. look at the entity framework, Yes, right. you see the server, you see Google, yeah. uh, SQL, right. memory, <laughs> right. yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful engineering, my man. Like this is exactly like I, I'm looking at this storage broker in here, and I'm looking at look use SQL Server. So they have this on configuring going on, right? And then on configuring, they're basically going and saying, "Hey, what do you want to do with your options?" Just like you said options basically i did a project where i was doing integration testing on mm -hmm. sqlite and then mm -hmm. going to the sql server on the real implementation and through setting a configuration in my app settings i was able to actually tell it which source to go to just between those two different um extension methods right like use sql server or use sqlite if it's this configuration yep. you use this that configuration you that i had yep. to do obviously migrations for both but but yeah it allowed me to kind of use that flexibility there so you can quickly have the same setup and everything but just call that one extension method and yep. then you're good to go that one builder method I should say. Yeah. and and maybe at some point in time we'll be able like something to, just like this like like just like i'm telling you like this and you're injecting mm -hmm. like each one of them asks for its own thing like if i go and yeah. say give me the entity framework this is the beauty this is the stuff that they did they basically went and said Let's see here. Entity framework. Uh, I think I think Postgres. And you know what would be nice too? Using mm. that builder pattern. If mm. if let's say the SDK said use Azure, right? It's then you can say add event grid or like dot add event grid and then yes. put some properties there and then yes. dot add, you know, like based off of that um initial, like you have a um, the SDK could be returning like I client builder or whatever you want to call it, right? right. But essentially, say use Azure, then dot after that, and then you um, or add event grid, add whatever. That way, they're able to actually now more granularly define um, yep. different components in Azure. Look, look, you're switching between SQL and Postgres like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. That's what I want to do, Ken. Yeah. How do we implement this? <laughs> So, so from a getting the base model set up for how you want to um, add the builder as, at, a, at a lay queue level mm -hmm. um, is probably first, like what do you need for, because um, again, you say you want to support various types of whether it's queues, whether it be emails or it be events. So standardizing those, those contracts of what you need from the options is probably first, like at that core level. Okay. And then the SDK really can go along and just say, okay, I want to actually get a client ready for Azure um, event bus or something, right? Or Azure event grid or something like that, right? You can start adding um, those extensions onto it, yeah. which will 
really be calling um, Lake Hughes court on their yep. internal side of it. Yep. Um, getting those options correctly. Yep. So, yep. so I think the thing is kind of establishing what are the base options you need for sending events for e like again, email, right? Like, do we want to have it more granular or where like we're sending email, we're expecting a certain, um, you know, message body address, whatever, whatever we want to end up testing, right? Like whatever we want to simulate, like what are the base core components we need to do each one of those things at a very, very abstract level. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you can just create those wrappers, right? So um, I think it's, I always like establishing the API, but like if you've done that, right? Like establishing the API you want to see being used. Um, right. right. So right. let me ask you this so, question then. Is it beneficial that we follow this override pattern? where you go and say, oh, easy. You can instantiate something in here. However, you know, the direction of which that something is going all depends on, like you'll always have core outside of the box, right? You have core, yeah. you know, you only have to tell core which, uh, uh, which uh, API URL you want to use, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, you just want to know that, but okay. Assuming that this is being said, should we do this in on configuring pattern where people go and say, okay, instead of doing this in the constructor, right? The constructor just instantiates the core library, but then on mm -hmm. configuring it determines which direction it needs to go, you know, because later on you could put like you can read your configurations and determine, oh, this is supposed to go onto local versus going onto the cloud, right? Would this right, pattern right. be be useful? Uh, I don't I don't see just yet um, of setting up that sort of override method. Okay. Um, maybe allowing them to um, like I feel like that could be an extension, right? Because if you think about it, this is all going to be based off of services and service collection. Yep. Yes. Right. Yes. So let me let me draw a scenario of um, I am establishing a Lake U client. I'm like um, I have I'm got a client builder. Yeah. Right. And I'm saying uh, that uh, use Azure dot add event grid dot add something or whatever. Right. And each one of those I can place the option in. Maybe we allow them to do an override. Right. Where they can pass in a custom implementation of a class that we've exposed. Yeah. Um, yeah. That we allow to override. And yeah. then they can swap yeah. the implementation out via an mm. extension method. So so let's say you're doing like use um event grid right yeah but let's say you want to override um the use of however you're doing something i just i'm just making stuff up like the yeah, top I'm with you. you allow I'm with you. right I'm with you. I'm with you. yeah and so now what you can do is allow an extension method to be there to where you can actually go into the service descriptors find the previous implementation that you have remove that and swap it out and so but as long as it adheres to the interface right mm -hmm. So you can say like override sending. I'm just making that up. Override. Yep, 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 yep. You can have type T, right? Where T is where T is supposed to match a I event grid sender. So you, you and you're back in lay queue, like you're you're expecting at the core a sender, but now you swap that out with their own custom implementation that adheres to the interface, and now they can override all the methods if they want to, right? They right. have the interface right. available to them. Um, they can override all the methods. Of whatever they're expecting and that way you're not actually having to inject anything into your core that's not that you're not you know that you don't want it's really on them because again it's, it's their it's their service registry right mm -hmm. it's where all their services are so that's on them to kind of like i'm going to take swap out this um original service and put my own proprietary service in its place mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. So, so we can just do a allow them to override it through the extension methods to say, "Hey, register this type instead of what your default behavior is." That's right. That's right. right. That's right. Okay. Let's okay. let's try it together. Let's see. So, so, I think I think the big thing too in that case though to allow them that flexibility, we'd have to create interfaces at a lower grain to say like um, like I event grid sender, right? Like if they want to change how you're sending to the grid or something. Mm -hmm. um, they can override that by doing it at the interface. But if they have the interface at that level of just the client is their only one, they won't actually have anything to override. Right, I mean, right, right. So if you break your interfaces up by the action that you're performing um, within that entity, then you can kind of allow them to override that behavior. Um, so okay, okay, okay. Let's, let me, I know I said a lot, but. 
No, 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 don't no, brother. No, 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 no. I appreciate it a lot. So, so wait. So, let, let me process this. You're saying you want to be able at the core level. You're offering an interface, and this interface is, let's say, it's just under services. Okay. And then you have a thing that basically goes and says, this is my I uh, event publisher or sender service. And I, I think you already have something like that too, also in the uh, in the core. Yeah, in the yeah. core you already have it on the yeah. other project. Sorry. And, 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 yeah. and like you, yeah, that's right. So, so something that basically implements this in the Azure side, something that goes and says, oh, you already have this interface. I'm going mm -hmm. to take it. I'm going to implement it. And since we have dependency injection, this client will know, oh, Kenny, okay, that's, that's very, very, very smart. Because in here, we're basically going and saying, hey, you know, you need a, you need to instantiate these services. Right. So let's let's go back to Lake U here. You're I'm basically going and saying at the client side. I have a bunch of services that I need to instantiate in order for me to be able to this is the equivalent of startup CS basically. Of course this is crappy and we need to not do that in a constructor, but the idea here is that I'm basically you're basically going and saying, as long as you have this, you can swap this mm -hmm. between uh, your own implementation. And if you really want to, if it's something a little bit complex and logic that you're like, hey, I don't think they should ever override this method, um, you can now provide them with a an abstract class to um, work off of, right? In mm -hmm. which you're kind of locking down certain implementations, but you have an um, a abstract method where like, okay, provide your logic here, but don't touch this right here, right? That yeah, kind of thing. So yeah. we, we, we can make it more friendly for the user based upon like if they are doing an override, something that like, I mean, some of it could be like, hey, you need to implement the whole interface. But then sometimes we could also have abstract methods for them to actually take on and add to if they if they are allowed to. So that way we're kind of also locking down like some of the core stuff we have going on that we don't want folks to override is kind of how you can get around that a little bit and still allow them to know Hey, you can actually up, upload. You can do this method, but you can't do you know the others or something. Right. 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 But yeah, sorry, I'm <laughs> interrupting your chain of thought. But yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, no. You no, you're fine. I'm just. This is this is an interesting problem, and if we can unlock this problem in a simple way, you know, uh, I think that, I think we can we can steal that. And we can use it across, like the, right now, this is only targeting, hey, Azure service, uh, sorry, queues, anything that's queue based. You're publishing mm -hmm. something and you're subscribing to it and the publisher could be external or local. That's it, right? But we're going to mm -hmm. later on go and create more and more libraries. You know, there will be like send, email sender core and then email sender dot send grid, email sender dot mail or exchange server, or whatever the case may be, right? Um, yeah, it's gonna be way grand, real granular. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice yeah. to just be able to have those wrappers right around it, and your core functionality will never, you know, open close. <laughs> so how do we? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. So how do we? It's true. Oh, oh yeah, open for extension, close for modification. This is this is it. This is so. So let me just ask you this then. Um, I want like literally, if we can come outside of this meeting with a nice example, not even like, it doesn't have to build. I just want something that I can look at and be like, yeah, this is the example of how we're going to structure this, the architecture of our system. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so let's do this. So your client will have something going on for them. Okay. Okay. So they're going to be taking in, like you mentioned, a certain uh, like 
configuration or something or some type of because they're also going to be doing extension methods right off of a builder that's going to allow them to so i think you need to also have a core uh expose a builder right that they can work off of right where they can say use azure because in your builder you're going to be building your own core components too like you need to have something to where like you construct something that they can call and you construct all those um services that you need for like you to work on their behalf that's, that, that's yeah, yeah that, that's the thing so, so so hear me out on this if you have something in here called uh a public avoid um uh configure like this mm -hmm. okay i <laughs> like i love the ai kind of going with me like this that's hilarious yeah you know, it's, awesome. it's insane dude like what the hell like <laughs> seriously man like what is going on here <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> so, so so configure and then in configuration you know every library goes in and says hey i am the lake you i am azure lake you client and i am inheriting from this lake you client and i want to override let's see what, what's the problem here yeah it's basically saying your base whatever i don't think we will need that much but we can certainly go here and say override uh public void oh sorry public override oh i have to make this one virtual don't i oh yeah 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 I say override and I say configure like this and because because it's this guy right this guy is basically going and saying uh, these these like you options in this realm has an extension that says like you options that says use Azure service bus but that's not what I want because the customer is supposed to be the one doing that the customer is supposed to be the one using this this function, right? So, gotcha. yes. So if I have okay, maybe this is wrong. Maybe the right thing is to go and say, uh, "Lake you, Lake you dot Azure dot extensions," and that's your exposure layer, and you're basically okay. going and saying public. Let's see here. Public. You want to build up a service collection, or you want to build it off of a builder? Like, what's your, what do you think? You think of like having a, a one builder that kind of you can gather all the data, then can compile it, or should we work directly off the service collection? Well, we can't assume the service collection is always going to be there. Like, I want a console application to be able to. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 So if we have a public, um, public void. And then you're saying public static void, and then you're saying use Azure service bus, right? And <coughs> the extension here is the uh, Lake U options. These are these are the options, and that's the extension that we're working with. And out of that extension, can we're basically going and saying, here's my connection string. And then here will be instantiate Azure specific services. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky if you're doing it outside of the uh, dependency injection model, only because at this level. You're going to need to do a because uh, you're going off of options right now. So we, you could you could inject that into uh, like a core client of some kind. But if you had a builder, you're saying you're saying the builder dot use Azure service bus, whatever, then you can do at the end of your configuration of all the different extensions, you could say dot build. Then you produce a I like you client. Uh, that's 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 native to what they're doing azure you can say azure i azure event client whatever one to name it right but, but, but um, remember, that's okay but remember we right, want yeah. both to be running like we want to be able to have both azure and the core 
server running. Right, right. So that's that's why I'm saying it's going to be tricky because if you do it outside of dependency injection, the underlying services will be a little bit more loosely kept. You kind of have to be, you'd be forced into keeping your client in a more sort of a singleton fashion mm -hmm. instead of having to, it, it being able to be transient, pulling in the dependency services, it, which, which is fine. I just think that because I mean, from a console app, right? Like if you're not, you know, wanting to use that whole uh, service collection to set up from, a, from the console app, you're going to have to kind of construct your services all into that model and then they use it, right? Whereas in, if you're using a API, right? That has service collection built in or, or that kind of thing, bless you. You could basically um, leverage service registration, right? If you're doing it within this, the in that services model. So it's kind of, it kind of, it's almost two different, like if you're using it just strictly in the console app and you're just wondering that, or are you doing Azure functions like without the setup for the service uh, dependency injection? You could you could still do that, and I mean it's going to be a singleton instance, right? Like that's what it's you know it's going to be that, right? But if you want to transfer that to a more um, dynamic uh, service collection based, you know, and like your API setup startup, I think the is the configuration is going to be look a little bit different. Um, but you could have, I mean, again, you could have factories put that together that have to worry about how you construct it. So that's not really that big deal. The reason why I say that though is that. If you want to allow for a builder versus that dependency injection through the services right right because right. right. well, it, it can yeah. be both like you could do a builder and build it then inject it into your service you could do that right and then that works for both scenarios right but, but, but that's, that's, that's true true that's true let me try to let's see here um let me try to like see see how would that look like so if i have public class um uh, some app you're basically saying you're basically saying here let me just see like you're saying okay you're i want to use lake you with azure so i went and downloaded lake you.azure right what would that look like just you tell me and i'll write it down i just want to see what all where, right uh, all right so so i'm going to talk high conceptualize first and then bring it in right yeah. so before we get going um like i kind of feel like if you were to set it up from a that dependency injection type style mm -hmm. you could still later or not even later but at the same time create um your factory some factories for creation and assembly all the different actions that are needed for this right yeah um so you could do it in a way that's using services on on the back end anyways right so you're actually so when you actually are doing an AP, uh, ASP.NET Core app, right, mm -hmm. and you add that, you know, you know, service collection dot use uh, lake queue Azure, right, mm -hmm. dot add event grid dot add, you know, whatever Azure cloud mm -hmm. services, right. So that already is going to inject that into their services. Right. But if you're in a console app, we should we should allow an extension method, um, kind of that says. And we can call it um, Lake U Builder or whatever, yeah. but that static class dot um, create Lake U oh. Azure Event Grid Client or whatever like that. Oh. Oh. Thing. Oh. And then that mm -hmm. could actually assemble the same exact client, except it's going to be in that singleton model, right? Because your factories will say, hey, instead of giving you getting it registered from services, um, and actually you can you can probably create your own um, container within that as well right that's what i so so one of <coughs> excuse me one of the things that i was thinking is to basically go and say you know hey customer you don't have to worry about instantiating anything azure related anymore because you're already yeah. using lake U azure so we're selling you that package as part yeah. of the you know what i mean so 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 what you're saying is basically what you're saying is that there is assume that this is your startup right you're basically yeah, going and right. saying uh, services dot add transient like this. Oh, not, not, even, not even at that grain. Um, we'll be doing, that, but they'll be doing that use at uh, Lake uh, use Azure Lake U or Lake U yeah. Azure. Yep. So where where would they do that? Like at the services dot use like this service dot use uh, Azure. 
a lake you Azure like this. Yeah, yeah. And then the maybe a connection yeah. string or something like mm -hmm. this. Um, or or um, use Lake you Azure, and then if we want to assemble it so they don't get all of it at once, they can do like dot add event grid dot add event but like you know we can start configuring each piece so um that use like you azure can be the start of that builder like that's going to return you a builder and then now in that builder you can add um your different com cloud components right, right. so what's, what's what we want to start out with um uh, we're, we're starting with azure and the local queue yeah mm -hmm. Q. okay so you can do use lake queue azure that's okay. going to get them to tap the uh, sdk so you don't need to pass the connection string yeah. Um, but but directly after that, do a dot add um, uh, queue, right? And again, the naming I'm mentioning, I was going to be crazy. No, you're, but you're, uh -huh. add your options right there. So connection string. If connection string is all you need for that, add your connection string right there, right? It's kind of cool to use options because it allows you, if you later want to, you know, give them some different configurations, like, you know, yeah, exactly, like that, right? And so now you can now say, okay, they're only going to use services for the queue but if later you want to add event grid mm -hmm. they can now do dot add event grid this is giving you back a builder right? right and what that's doing is we're actually on the back end constructing those services and adding transients right mm -hmm. um at that outer layer um and then or or, or you can do it off of the add lake queue as well I'm right, sorry, add right. Queue. you can do it after add queue right oh after, okay we're, we're, we're returning you a builder so you can do That's it all right. directly. So you can you can do it separate. I mean, I don't know if, if they want to organize it differently, right? Um, yeah. yeah, they can do like add, yeah, that add. Yeah, <laughs> I love these auto corrects. Yeah, man. oh, it's man, man, it's crazy. By, by the way, just so you know, it's no. not just that; it's also in Arabic. Like if I go and say, uh, uh, let me just show you how crazy this is. I was playing with this the other day. And yeah. if you have, if I go and build a class like this, public class, and it's completely in a different language like this, yeah, <laughs> right. And inside this class, I create it. Look, look, look. What? Oh, <laughs> here's oh, the crazy. Man. Here's the crazy part, though. Like, if I go here and say, um, let's say this string, and this just says message, right? And I'm just putting in the message here. So I basically made this whole thing. So first of all, it knows how to autocomplete. It's working with this. But watch yeah. this. This is the crazy part. This is where it gets crazy. It knows I am. Um, let, me, let me tell you, uh, this needs to be static. This is basically me saying console, right? So mm -hmm. watch watch the craziness of this. If I go here and say uh, dot look here's, here's the crazy part do you, know what, do you know what this word is this is yeah. options in a different language so it saw this here it saw this here and it went in yeah. and said hey let me translate that for you man that's that's wild dude it, it's it's <laughs> they're not doing that. some good stuff man Jeez. yeah whoever is sitting on the other side here's the other crazy part do you know what this yeah. part that it's printing is? It says marhaban, mm -hmm. but it means welcome, uh, hello world in Arabic. It knows that I want to print an example yeah. of a message that says hello world. I didn't say hello world since we started writing this code. I didn't say man. nothing. <laughs> this is getting crazy. <laughs> oh, man. They're doing some good stuff, man. My goodness. <laughs> my goodness yeah this is this is this is the freaky stuff that i like to anyway yeah. i'm sorry about that let's let's go back no, no, uh, uh, that, uh, just another like mind-blowing moment like what man the power man, of the studio is... man i love the tooling man you can't yeah yep. the ecosystem is everything the community of it is everything so okay so use like you azure add q add event grid and then this mm -hmm. guy automatically, but this guy is too tied to service collection. We don't want Correct. it. To, Correct. Yeah. Now that is using a builder, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we're not returning you the builder because you're already in the service collection, right? So now let's do our console app example. Okay. So do, um, the interface you're going to use is I lay Q builder. I'm just, again, I'm making the okay. stuff. But it probably needs to be like build I as Azure Lake Q 
builder or something, right? Like, like yeah, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so, okay. Right, I so, I like you, builder. Okay. Yep. Yeah, equals um uh new or you know we can have an extension method because we don't want, we don't want to give them that's access what I want to do. Yes. So do an extension method. I like you builder equals um like you extensions dot um create builder or something right because that way it allows us to change the underneath implementation and class structure without oh. them having to yeah so that that lake you extension is going to be a static class right, right. it's going to be a static right. tool set. Uh -huh. and underneath we have our own i lake you builder that is also used in line uh nine when it injects like uh -huh. when, it, when we're starting to or not even not even not even that i mean yeah we, it's going to return a builder but yeah um, now here you can say builder dot add queue dot add event grid. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, man, this is wild <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, dude, you ain't really. It's to the point where we don't need to tap. The, we're into the tab tab. This, it's we're the tab language. language. We're gonna think, and it's gonna start building it. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So, so now, so now you're in a, you're in your um, console app, right? Now, do at the end of it. Um, do equal matter of fact, do equals dot build, right? So do um I Lake Azure Lake Cube client, right? Um, which which and this is gonna be injected in their services now, right? Like mm -hmm. they're gonna get I Azure Lake Cube client, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do a um and then for the name of it, it is gonna be client or something, just for you know, yeah, yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. equals uh builder dot build, right? So now we've constructed the same services using the same builder technology. And now they can either use this singleton of a Azure Lake U client, or they can use in their services collection, startup area app, whatever. They can use the same exact configuration, but have it built into their service framework. Does that make sense? Because that, that way, like you won't need to actually like this underneath the covers, we're still we still can use services that we've registered. Because at some point, what if they want to swap out again? Like, let's say we are allowing them to change the implementation of a class, but like a, a, a interface, right? Yeah. Let's say we have an yeah. I event sender that we're exposing to them that they can actually update, right? They want to override that, they can. And on the back end, this builder will just, in its internal service collection, swap out those services, right? So now you're always working off the service collection to register services, the container, I should say. You're always working out of a container. But mm -hmm. one just so happens to be built into the framework. The other one is you're on your own sort of. Yeah. Container. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. yeah I, I'm yeah. just thinking. thinking. So you're creating, you're instantiating this builder. This will be like an, uh, a static class. Mm -hmm. It's giving you a builder, and you're taking that, and you're saying add queue, mm -hmm. and the queue will be the Azure service bus queue, right? Exactly. So it's the uh, SDK that they have. That's a wrapper. They're able to create whatever they need to on their right. when, they, when, they, when they do add queue. And then because you use this. Yeah. Now you have this client right here. That's building. Because yep. of that builder. Yep. And the same way we're doing um, that add queue and add event grid on line 10 and 11 is doing the exact same thing um, or has the exact same capability as the as uh, line uh, 17 where you're doing builder, right? It's the same exact builder interface. It's just that one builder is going to be spinning up its own service collection internally and registering the services. The other builder up, up top is going to be leveraging the already there service collection, but doing the same thing, still building all the same services. So you can expect the same dependency injections um, at both levels. Okay. But like the only, the only thing is that that builder, I mean, the, the client you have right there is going to have an internal of I service provider yeah. that is going to now you know, provide as services if needed. I mean, we can do it different ways. You can like create the collection, um, spit out the object, and then now dispose of that collection. And that that builder is a singleton because you've got yeah. the you've got that service, and now they're just 
you know, if they want to build a different one, they can, but they can leverage that throughout their console app. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Either, either way we want to do it. Like, you know, cause I mean, I mean, there's no point when you're at this level, once you've registered all your services and you've kind of built out that client model and all the dependencies are there, once you get it out of the collection, I mean, there's, there's no real reason to keep a service collection unless you're going to allow them to do crazy things like register more later, right? Like, or to, like that kind of thing, right? So you don't even need it after you kind of constructed it. But the service collect, the container is good for constructing all the services together to build you that client for yourself. Okay, so so hear me out. That's, yeah, that's... I think I think I see where you're coming from now because mm-hmm. I see that builder in here which also happens to be I think this I think I see what you're saying because this model here if I go into startup cs I think this is exactly what you're doing you're basically going and saying hey I want to be able to go and say services dot add db context just an example storage broker and then you're basically going and saying what are my options mm mm-hmm. Right, and then you're basically going and saying, options dot use SQL Server. I like that a little better too, though. Like wrapping it inside instead of doing it based on an outer extension. Like doing it inside like that, having the outer options. Like that's kind of, I mean, the inner options. That's kind of cool. Like like using the extension at that layer. Like that's kind of yeah. nice. I think that makes more sense actually. We also want to enforce having brokers do their configurations internally. So I don't want to do it in here. I want every broker has its own configurations internally. Otherwise, this startup CS okay. will turn into a mess, yeah. right? So, okay. So, okay. so, 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 hear me out. I want both. Actually, I want to do. So you see how, you see how they're offering. I'm assuming this is coming from the entity framework, is it? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I think they have a service collection extension. So they, yeah, they have an add DB context that's coming off of their, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, entity framework service collection extensions. Yeah. My man. Kenny, my man. <laughs> so 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 entity framework for gotta love it. Yeah, yeah. So so this here is basically saying if we can offer this and also offer this capability. Hold on. And also offer this capability because that's pretty much the same thing you're basically going and saying hey let me do the builder internally in here as yeah, part of yeah. your construction right i bet you on configuring is being called in the base class in here of of that whatever that is i mm. think i think maybe i'm wrong Let's see okay so so i think during building of services is great because let's say you're using a let's say you're yeah, yeah. if you're if you're simulating a startup right yeah you're allowing them to take services and add stuff to it whatever right yeah but when you're building the framework together for running you're saying okay give me my configuration it's going to all the sources now i'm gonna throw in this a service a new service collection i'm, I'm right. gonna probably add some stuff core to my framework that i need and then I'm going to pass that service collection into this conf- a configuring method of some sort yeah. and then allow them to add stuff to it. And then when it comes out of that function, they've now modified my service collection. So here yeah. they're doing it with the builder. Like they already created a builder. There's some core stuff they probably have to use, but they're saying, okay, now let's throw you that builder, let you do your own custom stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we can now underneath the, underneath the covers, we're also having our own core set up as well. Okay. So, so, but I, I, you just said something too that just made my mind go even further because you said you want to be able to have it at a per class basis. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you really could register these services to where um, they're bound to that type T, right? Where like internally, like whatever that class is, you could set up options in a way that, like, I don't know if you've heard like the I options monitor and that kind of stuff, right? You can now yeah. set up granular specific options for each class so when you dependency when you get your dependency injection right you say like i like you client and then your type in the right in the generics is like your storage broker of whatever right and now you can have different implementations per broker like that's yep. like because you might be interacting with several different queues i mean i don't you know i don't know right? there will 
the, yeah, I, I'm, I can suspect that, that <laughs> I'm suspecting that, that there will be an option where um, we are going to uh, need to interact with multiple queues at the same time and we want to allow people to do something like that right yeah. I, I like the builder idea i i like the builder idea a lot and you know i think i think this is what we gonna need to do onward so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to put together an example of this right in our session for our next session i'll put an okay. example of this so i'm gonna basically go and say here is um here's an extension class that i've created right and here is mm -hmm. the options that we have right and here is how we're gonna allow you know certain extensions and certain capabilities to be used you know either on configuring or you know through the uh what you call it through the 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 connection straight through the through the startup cs from the service collection yeah yeah i think yeah. i think that could work i yeah. think that yeah, could exactly. work yeah yeah that, that was a good that was a good uh suggestion too because i mean they might be using a console app right and it's like not everyone's going to wire up dependency injection in their console app. You know what I mean? So that's, you're giving them now an option to outside of a dependency injection model, I'm still able to do the same thing. Yep. So that's pretty, uh, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. I'll give it a shot. Thank you so much, Kid. I appreciate you, brother. You know, we'll, uh, we'll continue. It's a little bit more advanced topics and, you know, advanced engineering. You know, we're, we're basically trying to build really leverage, a, you know, certain patterns and certain standards to make sure that we can offer a properly engineered library that allows extensions and stuff like that. And just like I said, you know, I don't build something I don't personally need in real life. Like I'm, I'm just building my own tools. I'm basically going and saying, hey, I think this can be useful. You know, here's here's the outcome of this. Here's what I can do with this. <laughs> um, as usual, thank you so very much, brother. I, I really appreciate you for this. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next session. <laughs> our pleasure, man. After our conversation, man, I always leave on a high. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> we're ready to take on the day. This is good. This is good stuff, man. <laughs> of of course, my brother. All right. And of course, for the people watching, hey, you know, if you played around with a problem like this before, if you needed to tackle this problem, feel please feel free to reach out or drop a comment in the comment section. And as usual, you know, if you have any uh, compliments, you know, for Mr. Ken here for his amazing suggestions and, you know, kind of dr driving and bringing these kind of amazing engineering ideas, please feel free to drop it in there. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you later, Ken. Take care. <laughs>